And Apparently. so we get it. We're on the air live. Welcome back. You see that handsome gentleman you're looking at? That is Mr. Guns and Gear. He's our guest here in the Big Daddy Gun Studio. That's right. This is the Hank Strange Who Moved My Freedom podcast. This is episode 20, right, Lola? Yeah, episode, episode 20, I think. I don't know. You know, it is. What do I know? <laughs> What's up, man? Not a whole lot. It's good that you have Lola there, so this might actually work out tonight. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If, Lola's not, if Lola isn't here, I have no clue what is going on, my friend. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, yeah I uh, made the announcement over on Facebook and Instagram, so some of my viewers should be trickling in as well. Awesome. Uh, cool. So there's a, you know, we'll, there, there, I'm sure there'll be people. There's people in the background chatting i don't think you could see that but there's you know on that link that i gave you for the video there's usually people there chatting and all that kind of stuff i'll we'll pass on messages to you gotcha for the first for the folks who don't know i haven't done a hangout video in like a year and i hank had to walk me through this fancy newfangled technology so kind of new to this <laughs> you, yeah it's in a year <laughs> um, i only did like two ever three maybe yeah i think did we do one together before i can't we remember did, yeah. yeah we did Oh, okay. Yeah. So I haven't seen you. I think when did I see you last? Uh, NRA show, right? All right. Yep. Yeah. So how's it been going, man? How's the gun world treating you? Uh, it's good. It's busy. Good. Yeah. Uh, it's very, very busy. Uh, yeah. But yeah, no, you things are, are busy, man. You are super active all the time, man. You're always throwing up the videos. I am. I try it. My goal for the last year or so has been three, year, three or four videos a week. Right now, I'm going to up that. Uh, to probably four or five videos a week and um, I'm gonna watch the analytics and see how that does because for those that don't know um, Sometimes if you put up too many videos people don't watch them and uh, it just kind of gets lost in their in their feed So I'm gonna try four to five and we'll see how that goes uh, Probably starting this week actually. So yeah, there's always like a, a magical sweet spot there is you know, and people get finicky. Like I started doing these live videos and there's some people like, what the hell's the matter with you, Hank Strange? <laughs> you yeah. know, which yeah. I'm like, what, well, did you not see the Hank Strange part? Yeah, right. When You're you uh, into this. These are podcasts now, right? Yeah. So these are podcasts. Uh, we, we broadcast them live and everything, but then I strip out the audio and it goes on iTunes. Gotcha. I'll just still be the first podcast I'm on then. Oh, so. sweet. This will be a special <laughs> episode. When it goes on iTunes, I'm going to let you know because I know you know you got like a super influence, man. You've yeah, you've been you've been growing really, really fast, you know? I have. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I hit 100,000 probably, probably 18 months ago and I'm already almost at 200,000. So yeah, yeah, that's I'm awesome. Not, you know, so that's and it took me what four years to get to 100,000. So yeah. Is it that is it that you all of a sudden ramped up? Is it just that you just got really super sexy lately? What do you think? <laughs> could be it. Could be the extra gym time. But no, in all <laughs> in all seriousness, no. It's uh, I think it's just the um, exponential growth. You know, when, when the more people know about it, the more people know about it. And I think that's sort of just how it works. Yeah, so, I was talking to uh, Matt over at Demolition Ranch, and he's saying the same thing. Like, you know, his first channel hit a million, and then it hit like three, and like a year later, so. I mean, yeah, he's his stuff is insane, man. He's on another level. <laughs> yeah, he really is. He's got like uh, I was talking to someone about that the other day. He's got like he's got super cuteness, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's got you know. I mean, I'm a dude, but I'm not afraid to admit when no, he's a dude. Guy. Yeah, yeah. So he's cute. Then <laughs> he's got like the animal thing. You know, he's a vet. <laughs> yeah. He likes guns. Right, and mare's pretty as well. So yeah, you know, yeah. It's you know, like a well. lot of. Yeah, they were just really good looking all the way around, you know. So Absolutely. he's kind of a rock star. I bet the guy sleeps two hours a night, though. He has yeah, to, I don't, yeah, he's I don't, insanely busy. I don't even know how he does like all these things, man. Because I think we saw him, we saw him one night. I think it was, where was it? I think I saw him in Arizona or something, and he was doing video. And the next thing I know, the video was up and it had a couple million views. Yep. This is crazy. So I I've never seen him in a public setting, but uh, like so like shot or NRA. But uh, mm -hmm. Cameron, my friend Cameron from the Swing and Big Channel, said that he, he walked up to him at Shot Show, and like like security handlers like came up and like pushed Cameron out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> and Matt was oh. like, no, no, he's cool. He's still gonna be. 
Uh, yeah, because Cameron Cameron's cool. Cameron's cool. Twang and Bang's cool. Absolutely is. So yeah. yeah, he's a good guy. Is he is Twang and Bang in your neck of the woods? He is. He goes about an hour from me. Oh, cool. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta, um, I've never like, have we, I've never done a video with him. I know he's watched my videos, shared my videos and all that kind of stuff. Yep. Helped me out to grow the channel. So he, he and I started around the same time and we, uh, we were on a lot of the same gun forums together. So we would private message each other back and forth, just trying to figure out how YouTube worked because we had no idea. And if you watch my older videos, that will be readily apparent. Uh, <laughs> that one, yeah. That's the good stuff, though. Is, you you don't you're not taking those down, right? Because some people no. take down their old stuff. No, no, no. They're, I mean, it's, it's good. A lot of people watch it. And they say, like, I read the comments. They're like, man, you've come a long way, and that's yeah. true. You know, every video yeah. you learn something. So I mean, yeah, I, I think. I, go ahead. I had, no, I had no idea what video editing software even was. Never mind how to use it when I started this. So yeah. I think that people enjoy, you know, when they discover you, they enjoy going back and looking at the crazy things you did. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. When you, when you first started, and I know I have some. Yeah. So anyone who wants to go, like, go look at my old videos. It's really bad. <laughs> It'll, be know, okay. uh -huh. It'll be entertaining if nothing else. Yeah, absolutely. And no matter how embarrassing they are, I don't take them. You know, I even saw the other day somewhere, some one of those big blogs, like either the Firearm blog or the Truth About Guns, I get them mixed up right. <laughs> all the time. I get in trouble because I mix them up. But one of them had an old video of Mac. Okay. And how you could tell it's old because he didn't have a beard. <laughs> right. Yeah. He had a lot. He had a goatee for a while there in the beginning. Yeah. It looks so weird. I'm like, who the hell is that guy? Well, it's because he had a boss and he couldn't be all, yeah. all, all uh, lumberjack man like he is now. Yeah. So that's cool. So here's so here's what folks want to know. I promised you. I saw I saw your live video where you said that I promised you we were going to talk about guns. Remember that? You did say that. You said the gun industry. Yeah. Gun. The gun. <laughs> That's how Hank broke me into this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Guess what, man? What? I totally lied. No, right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, would, I wouldn't do that to you, man. You too. I, I'll try to sneak. I will try to sneak in some stuff, guys. So hit me up with any questions that you have for Guns and Gear. Uh, folks, I've already got some coming in. Folks want to know, what's your background and how have you been doing YouTube and why did you start? Okay. Uh, so my background, um, uh, former airman, former soldier. I went through the Massachusetts uh, Police Academy, so I had that background, but I, I generally don't talk about any of that in detail um, publicly, and the reason for that is really simple. Um, I think this industry has a, a obsession, an unhealthy obsession with military and law enforcement, mm -hmm. uh, as if that you have to have that background to know what you're talking about and or um, say anything that might be applicable to what we're talking about. And I can tell you, absolutely not true. Um, very little of anything I talk about ever has any relatability to uh, that background. So uh, there's that. I started in YouTube. It's an interesting story. My, my wife, who I'm actually in her office right now, I, di I didn't pick out these lovely blinds. Oh, so that's uh, not because yeah, that place looks good. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so my wife, uh, when we uh, started dating, we weren't married then. Uh, in my opinion, my wife's an attractive young lady, and uh, she was a nurse um, at the time. And she is. I've seen her. She's a beautiful woman, Mrs. Yes. Guns and Gear. Yes. And uh, she was working really late night shifts as a night, night shift nurse in a, in a large city that we lived in. And um, she, she would walk out of the parking lot and have to walk like a long time in the dark at like four in the morning in the middle of a city. And, and I didn't carry a gun, and I was just like, "What? Hold on, stop! Stop! <laughs> Brave! <laughs> this, this is this has to end like today." And um, so she didn't know what she wanted, like everybody else. And you know, I heard her father and I, of course, had guns. She shot a few, and again, didn't know what she wanted. So the answer, in my opinion, is if you don't know what gun you want, like there's a few good options. One of them, everyone will say, is the Glock 19. So. Mm -hmm. That was right uh, when the Glock 19 Gen 4s were hitting the streets. So we went over to uh, Palmetto State Armory, which was a local gun store back then, and uh, picked up one of the new Gen 4s, took it out to the range, and it was atrocious. It would not make it more than three or four rounds without a malfunction, uh, oh, wow. regardless of shooter, regardless of ammo. And I've been a Glock armor for like 20 years. So I pulled the gun apart and uh, you know, was looking at it. Everything looked normal except for the Gen 4 part that were different. And uh, I wrote an email to Glock. 
they said, all right, cool, just send it in. So I sent it in and they sent it back with no changes in any of the parts. Uh, some of them I marked and uh, again, sent it back to nothing. So I was upset at that point, right? <laughs> and so I went out and uh, took the vi took a video. My, well, my wife took a video of me shooting it in the woods. It's the first YouTube video ever. I don't think it's still up. I think YouTube took that video down actually. Oh, wow. uh, but anyway, um, and it was with a point shoot camera in like 360p of me, me shooting the gun and it just showing the malfunctions constantly. Uploaded it to YouTube, no editing, no nothing, because I didn't know anything about that. And I shared the video on Glock Talk, which is a forum, uh, a gun forum. I shared it over there, and it went viral, because at the time, Glock was officially denying that there was any problems with their guns, because, you know, they say their stuff's perfect. Right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so they were denying there was any problems, and uh, the video just went viral. It went crazy, uh, because everyone on the forum had seen it, and they were having similar problems, and, you know, Glock was co trying to cover it up. Yeah. So, Eventually, uh, a rep from Glock actually contacted me and asked me to take the video down. I was like, no, <laughs> I'm not doing that. But then they said they'd replace my gun, so, which is what they should have done in the first place. Right. And, uh, so they did. Sent a new gun out, and then they were like, well, can you make a new video with the new gun? So I did. Uh, I thought that was you know, fair just to update everyone on the forum, too, because I'd been a member of the forum for many years uh, before this. And uh, so I made a video of that, and uh, then people just kept asking questions and that's where the challenge got started from there. You know, it's weird. Like the subject of Glock actually came up right before we went on air. Okay. And people don't like, I'm a Glock guy myself. You know, my, mm -hmm. my first gun was a Glock 19, yep. you know, um, gen four, never had any problems with it. Glock does have a really good reputation. Usually they work fine, but these are mechanical things and things go wrong. Right. So it's funny. I just, um, I think last week I had on Angry American. He's an author. I don't know if you ever heard of him. Yep. Yeah, and uh, he was he was here at a local gun store, actually Big Daddy Guns, that sponsors me, and he bought two Glock 17 MOSs, right? <laughs> and he called me today because when he puts the Trigicon optics on them, they keep popping off, no matter yeah. how he secures the optics. He needs the mount kit. There's a special kit for, for Glocks. Like seventeen bucks on Amazon. Oh, uh, for the for tr for Trigicon. Yep, you know, Glock did that totally wrong. They came out with their plate for the Trigicons, and and that doesn't work right. You have to get there's a special kit that that Trigicon makes because they were obviously getting so many calls for wow. it. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's like I said, it's like seventeen bucks. Yeah, um, and it's got special length screws and it's got a spacer in there so that doesn't happen. Okay, yeah. I mean, um, I hadn't heard of it. I guess I should have called up Mr. Guns and Gear. <laughs> it's a good thing you're off, man. I got, after you get off, I'm going to call him back and look so smart and be like, yeah, this is how you fix this. But, you know, he told me, and, and I was surprised because he said the plates, literally, he just broke one of the plates with his hand. Well, that's new to me. I've never heard yeah. of that. So he said that it's like, uh, you know, pop metal. That it's, it's really horrible. He was really upset about it. Yeah, and it's, would... uh, huh? I would be too. Yeah, and I was asking him if he kept it because of what you just said. Yeah, I was like, he told me he threw it away. I was like, dude, you don't ever throw this stuff away. <laughs> this is internet gold. <laughs> yeah, we need evidence. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, but these things happen. I mean, these things happen, and that's how uh, YouTube. So right out the gate, you went, you went kind of viral, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, okay. with, no, with no intentions of doing so. Yeah. And, like, and then people would just ask to make videos, and this was. 2012. So at that time, you know, everything's so different now in terms of YouTube and the gun world and social media and gun world. Um, it's, and people kind of forget it. But like back then, you had Hickok, Nothing Fancy, and Tim. And that yeah, was, it was just a few guys. Huge, huge. And that was it. I'm like, that was it. Like, there was nobody, you know. So, like, so to start a channel back then was not as hard as it is today, but it, it wasn't as easy as it was when those guys started. So it was sort of somewhere in between. And uh, so I never thought of doing it as like uh, a source of revenue. Like I didn't. Yeah, there I, wasn't even money in it back then. I no, think when those guys no. started. And and yeah. and like the biggest mistake I ever made. If anybody's watching this and wants to ask that too, here you go. The biggest mistake I ever made on YouTube was I didn't monetize my videos for a year and a half. Well, so when you started, you could no. monetize your videos. No, I you had to have ten thousand views, but my first video instantly got that. Right. Oh, that's right. So, hey, Bola, yeah. you're Justin Bieber <laughs> out the gate. Yeah, right. For real. So, um, 
So I was eligible for it, but I didn't do it because I didn't. I was like, yeah, hey, what's the point? It's not, you know, what I'm doing. And it was just another, you know, I didn't think it would be anything realistically. But what I didn't realize was that Google and YouTube won't recommend your videos, or is less likely to recommend your videos if they're not monetized. So my channel right. would be, my channel would easily be at least one and a half to two times as big as it is now. Yeah, like, and that's, that's and and that's good advice. I guess that's applicable. I know now they've got a limit again. I think they put you had to get was it ten thousand views. I think it was 10,000 views total now. And back then you had to have, I think it was 1,000 subscribers and like 10,000 views on one video or something. I think that was the threshold. Yeah. I think now you just have to do 10,000 views because they're worried about people using them to start jihads or something like that, you know. It's happening. <laughs> you, so. Whatever craziness. So here's a question. Lola, Lola is like moving around the question thing. Okay, what's your advice for new gun channels? Okay, so number one, monetize as early as possible. Uh, we, we covered that for the reasons yeah. we just said. Even if you don't care and your money is going to be like a dollar. Let me just tell you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so just do it so that way you get recommended. You get yeah, and you don't get, you don't, like for people who want to know getting paid and all that kind of stuff, you have to make a hundred bucks before they even cut you a check. And oh, yeah. that could be difficult because it's literally pennies. Right. Yeah, it'll yeah. be a while. Um, so do that. And then for me, I like I said, before I was ever on YouTube, I was very active in the forums. I've been into guns since I was an adult. Um, I didn't grow up with guns, so I didn't have them. But once I was an adult, my first shot a gun, I was like, "Oh yeah, this is this is for me. This is my jam." So, um, so I've been on gun forums before there was gun forums. You know, back then they were like essentially, if anyone's old enough to remember, they were like <laughs> the Stone Age. <laughs> they were kind of like they were like Reddit is now. Yeah, they weren't like organized forums like they are now. But um, so I've been on them forever. So with that, what I would do is like whenever a subject would come up um, that was related to one of my videos, I would try to link to my video just to drive traffic there. And that was the way I probably got to like 10,000 subscribers that way. And then from there, it kind of took care of itself. Um, but but yeah, I mean, that's how I started. And I think that's I think that's a good plan. But these days, I mean, there's so many other ways to do it with collaborations and all that stuff. And again, back then, that wasn't the case. But if you're going to start a gun channel, particularly a gun channel, you're going to lose money for a while. So just... Yeah, Just have that in your business plan. Right, absolutely. That's what I tell people. This is how I spend money. <laughs> right. You know, it's not necessarily a way that I make money. There are people that sponsor me and stuff like that, but I mean, it's you know, same same thing. That's how we spend money. That helps buy ammo, right. equipment, and all those kinds of things. Really, I'm not saying don't do this for the money, but there should be love first. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Right, you know, you should do this because you really enjoy it. It's something that you would do no matter what. Well, it's fun to you. Here's the thing: you, you'll never be successful if not, because the the amount of work that goes into it, I think people have no idea. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't, I mean, I, I spend easily forty hours a week on my channel, and and those who follow me, especially on social media, know like I try to respond to everybody as much as I can. Mm -hmm. It's getting harder every day, but yeah, um, it's. There is a lot of work that gets into it in the marketplace uh, of YouTube channels. It's very competitive right now. And if you're not going to put the time in, I mean, you can do it as a hobby. It's totally cool, but you'll never be successful. Yeah. A lot of, if you know, when I talk to younger people, um, I guess recently in the last few years, younger people think, oh, I'm going to make money. I'm just going to go on YouTube, social media. I'll be wealthy. They do think that. I get those yeah. comments a lot. <laughs> yeah. It's patience, a lot of hard work, um, you know. Guns and Gear probably won't tell you guys this, but he supports a lot of other gun channels out there, me included. Yep. You know, he spent he he watches my channels, he comments and you know shares and all that kind of stuff. He gives me advice, <laughs> a lot of good stuff, and and all of that helps. You know, I think I think you do it because that's who you are, but that there's also a little bit of karma that goes into that. Yeah. You know, and people who appreciate you doing that as well. Sure. I, I hope so. You know, because like yeah. I said, people help me coming up. You know, like anything else. Yeah. So, not that I'm so high up now, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Like you're absolutely, all, yeah. You're always learning, and you know, when yeah. you started out, like you said, you you did you needed some help, man. <laughs> so yeah. and you are you are pretty big. I know that. You see, it's weird because everyone looks at it as the guys that are in the millions. So if you look at um, wh who is it like uh, FPS Russia, Hickok Forty Five, um, an Iraq veteran. Those guys are in the millions. Yeah, they're the only ones though. Yeah, and there are few guys that are in the millions. So to do hundreds of thousands, that's like ridiculously awesome. I, I think I'm at fifty thousand, and I think, wow, how that happened. Yeah, and, you know, honestly, if you run the numbers, like 
I get more unique viewers every month than all but like four cable channels. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. Like that's, it is. It that's is crazy. Yeah, you're beating out magazines and all that kind of stuff. I'm all you know. There's only one magazine with more subscribers subscribers than me. Yeah, and what is that? <laughs> Guns and ammo. Guns and ammo. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. The yeah. Only yeah, that's the weird thing that I think that people don't understand because people turn to us more to the to the video medium more than anything. Absolutely. You know, and we're incredibly powerful. And you're just talking about your subscribers. I mean, think about your social media reach when you tag it on to that. Every every week, I'm over a million on Facebook. Yeah. It's but it's hard work. That's the thing I think people need to realize. It's hard work. You're always doing it. You know what? What do you? I think there's some questions out there. Folks want to know if you have a day job. Sure. Yes. Several. Several. <laughs> Several. <laughs> yeah. I got three, three <laughs> jobs. Three jobs, man. Yeah. That's how it is. You have to have several jobs in this, and you're always working, always posting stuff. I'm sure, right? Always. This little thing right here is powerful. <laughs> Active, and it's, it's always. What is that? Looks like an iPhone. It's an iPhone 7 Plus Magpul case, of course. Yeah. And how big is the hard drive? Did you get the biggest hard drive possible? Uh, I didn't. You know, you know, I, the last one I did, and what I found is I couldn't find stuff in it, so I forced myself. I think I got, I think I got a 32 or 64, whatever it was. I didn't get the biggest one for that reason. So. Okay. Because <laughs> you, yes, you get lost scrolling. I did. It was bad. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I always like. I think an iPhone is is uh, very good to do this. I always tell people that it's good. Got a good camera, good audio. Comes with software to edit video, so you can do pictures, do video. You can post on your social media. If you only had one thing and you were starting out, start out with a smartphone and an iPhone if you can. You don't have to, yeah. but an iPhone if you can helps a lot, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I yes, it does. But I never did anything with it video wise. I, I recorded some short stuff with it now, but I do all my Facebook Live with it because computers they always seem to fail for me when I do Facebook Live. But uh, so yeah, on that note though, John Lovell for those guys that aren't familiar with him, I've been talking to him a lot over the past few months because I really like his channel and what he's doing. He's got maybe twenty to thirty thousand subscribers, and um, he was telling me all of his stuff was on his iPhone until like last week, which I was like. I didn't. I mean, I was impressed. Yeah. His stuff looked decent, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hundred percent done on iPhone. So yeah, if you take your time, if you know what you're doing, and put some art and craft into it, yeah, there are people who are doing everything strictly on an iPhone. Yeah. And now I see at Shot Show NRA as well. There's guys that are just using iPhones. They right. Don't have cameras and all that kind of stuff when they go out there. Yeah. The only and I, I obviously I see it too because I'm there right there with you. The only thing that I, because I've thought about that, and the only thing I, I think that there's a downside is if the people in the booth that you're talking to don't know who you are, <laughs> when you walk up to them with an iPhone, it, you it's might like, not, who the hell is this guy? <laughs> then you might not get the same reaction. Yeah, how <laughs> dare you? <laughs> I've never done any of that, but I've, like, I see it and I'm like, hmm. That's, that's yeah. Yeah, if you're a rock star, no one cares. I think right. it is true because people do judge you by the size of your camera sometimes, which doesn't really yeah. matter. I mean, an I the camera in an iPhone is really powerful. It shoots 4K. Yeah, yeah, it shoots 4K. It does a lot of things, and and you could immediately throw those things up. I've seen people using iPads yeah. and all that. Let me uh, let me get onto some questions. Someone's trying to find out what's your Brownells thing of the day. Lola erased oh. that, but I saw the question. Are you divulging that info? I can't do it for tomorrow, no. Uh, so for those that don't know, over on Facebook, my Facebook page, it's Facebook slash Mr. Guns and Gear. Um, I, Brownells contacted me early, uh, she, I think Friday last week, and asked you know, if I'd be interested in doing like some, I guess, preview videos of tomorrow's deal, because they're doing a deal of the day every oh, day. Oh, sweet, okay. Brownells are good guys, I like them. They are, they're awesome. And uh, they're, they're trying to compete with Amazon in their prime day today. So they're doing oh. like, they're doing like one crazy blowout deal every day. Like Monday was a an Anderson complete 300 blackout AR-15 for 349 bucks, and then with code, wow. yeah, and then with codes that were there, it came out to like 320 bucks shipped. Shipped. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so okay. Yeah. Oh, no, that was one, and then today it was like a 800 dollar uh, Bush Bushnell laser range finder that was 300 bucks again with codes. It's even cheaper, um, and then. Tomorrow I can't say what it is. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow you can't. But just 
keep the track of guns and gear. I'm going to keep closer track of him now because I might want some of those deals. Absolutely. It's been going crazy with the deals. Um, crazy. Yeah, and, we sh and we should support them. I would like to see Brownells get bigger than Amazon. Uh, I would too. And um, I say that just because Brownells supports what we do, what you and I do, what people in this community do. And there's a few companies like them and people think like, oh, you're shilling for Brownells. Like I'm not. They, they don't send me a check. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not. And they just, they do it right, right? So like on Amazon, for instance, like they, they have all these anti-gun policies and things you can do and they try to take, like I, I have links, I put a link up the other day because I was doing a cleaning lubrication video for the Desert Eagle, uh, mm -hmm. out, just an instructional video. And I put a link to CLP and Amazon removed it because it was gun related. I was like, wow. so that's the kind of crap you're not going to see, obviously. Yeah. On so, you know, they're really good supporting what we do. And if there's stuff that's new that I can't get in for review, a lot of times, you know, it depends. They have budgets like everybody else, but a lot of times they'll send me stuff to review. Like I have a, a Magpul uh, SLS stock, I think, in right now, and they're the ones that sent it into review. So, you know, that yeah. stuff yeah. helps us bring content to you. So yeah, absolutely. Same thing with me. Brownells is not paying me for to do to do anything. Um, they are helping me out though, and that just goes to show you something. I ran into Roy from Brownells at the um, the Henry Thousand Man shoot. And I was trying to I was trying to introduce myself to him, and he was like, "Dude, I know who you are." Yeah, and it blew my mind. And they've been helping me out. Uh, they're helping us build up a gun that we're giving away from Stag Arms. It's a 308. Nice. Stag Arms has a Bones version of their 308, and Brownells is like helping us out with the parts and and promoting it and all that. We're going to be giving it away. I, you know what I like about them? They're they're like a family. They, they are. And like for people who, a lot of companies say that, but it's true. Like, like when Hank and I know, like we, we meet up with them at, um, we met up with them at NRA and stuff, but like they're, they know everyone's like, they know all of us. They like yeah, ask us they're about They're real gun guys. They're yeah. really into this. Yeah, they do. And they'll like ask you about your videos. So they're yeah. like, yeah, I'm watching your video the other day and you said whatever. And I'm like, you're watching my video. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, amazing. They're, 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 they're like really into this. And I know that there's people out there that think, yeah, whatever. This is the gun world. Everyone's into it. No, that's no. not true, right? <laughs> no, 100% not. So like I've, I've worked on some projects uh, on the side talking about do I have a second job, right? So I work on some projects doing like R&D stuff for gun companies and, and accessory companies. And you'd be shocked at the amount of people who work in a gun company that know nothing about employing the products they use yeah, um, yeah. at all, like like nothing. <laughs> so yeah. I, I wouldn't be shocked. I mean, it happens to me all the time. It's uh, it's like disheartening sometimes. It really is. It's, it's crazy, especially the engineers. Yeah. A lot of times, the engineers that you deal with, yeah, they don't know anything. They know how to like keep the product safe, you know, and operate right. like the feel of a, like a trigger or something, they have no idea. Yeah, I think sometimes that's to the, you know, I don't think the gun world understands how much to their detriment it is. And this is in all parts of the gun world. There are people that own gun stores that are like this. Maybe it just got passed down in the family. They don't really care about guns, but it's a business. And they're running it and they'll run it into the ground and to the manufacturers as well. Yep, absolutely. And I think particularly with here we go, state of the industry, right? So particularly with uh, gun companies that rely on military contracts, that's that's the place I see it the worst. They just have no interest in anything but their contract guns. And like you'd say, like, hey, if you did this, that'd be you know good for this reason, X, Y, and Z. Nah, the contract says yeah. otherwise. And they just yeah. don't, you know, like a classic example is Colt, right? Everybody knows that. They they took how long to put out a middle-length rifle that they first did this year. And how, I mean, if you go on like AR-15, the Colt Industry Forum, everyone says that in like every thread it has yeah. for the last 15 years. And they were like, nah, we're good. Yeah, <laughs> some they, companies brag to you. Like I've had people at, H, at HK, for example, just bragging that they don't give a crap about the civilian market, uh, which is amazing to me. Recently, they tried to like switch that around. Yeah, they have. You know, and make people believe that they care, and maybe they do care because now they're looking for the money. I think a lot of these guys don't realize that the the money's where we're at. It is. Uh, I mean, the, the U.S. civilian gun market's the largest in the world. It's it's larger than any military gun market by far. It's not. I mean, it's not even close. So, yeah, it absolutely is. But yeah, it's companies that just that just got fat and happy, you know, only caring about contracts. So yeah. And it's it's tough too because sometimes I see smaller companies. I know smaller companies that I've dealt with 
mom and pop companies that get into the gun business in one aspect or another, either making accessories or guns. And then instead of trying to go after the civil, because if you're smaller, you have an advantage. You can move faster. You can adapt. You can bring things that we're looking for to the market. And instead of going after us, they're like, oh, we're going to try to get these government contracts. It's interesting. <laughs> and they get doomed because it's the, the whole, I mean, you probably know better than I do what it takes to get government contracts, but it's not easy. No, no, it's not. It's a, a long process with a lot of lawyers and a lot of lobbyists. You know, so good yeah. luck. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So that's the thing that I think I, I don't know if everyone really understands that out there. That's why we when we come across companies that really care about guns, they really believe in the Second Amendment. They care about the people who are out there uh, kind of like evangelists for guns in the Second Amendment. It's awesome to see because really and truly there are lots of companies who just don't give a crap. It's true. Now, to a lot of the companies credits. And I think this is, you know, this, it's it's the chicken or the egg, right? But did a lot of them are coming around, and at least from my perception, right? Because what I know is my perception. So a lot of them are coming around, and I, I don't know if that's because I'm getting larger, or or they're actually the industry's coming around as a whole. I think it's a little bit of both. Probably both, yeah. But I mean, like I said, I've been doing this since 2012, and uh, it's 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 rare. That people just totally blow me off now. Which in the beginning, ninety-five percent of the time, it was like doing door-to-door -door sales, <laughs> trying to yeah. trying to get <laughs> trying to get a charging handle. <laughs> yeah. So I'm telling you, it was bad. Um, talking about the work it takes, right? There you go. Um, so yeah. So it's, it's there really aren't. Uh, people might think that there are. I guess maybe there's people trying to be agents, but there's no agents for the talent out there. So to create content like what we're doing, it's, it's really not easy. It's a, um, it takes talent, art, creativity, it takes drive and passion, desire to do this kind of stuff, knowledge, you know, and then you're, you're also taking risks because uh, what we're doing is more dangerous than the guys who make movies. <laughs> There's probably a lot of truth in that. Yeah, I mean, they're using blanks and in a lot of cases nowadays, well, I especially know with TV, they're using Airsoft and all that. But there's no there's no talent agents out there scouting us and going, hey, guys, you know, we'll do this for you and we'll get you these great deals and we'll get these guys to talk to you and that those guys to talk to you, right? Right. And like you said, that's starting. I mean, you and I both know that. Yeah. Um, guys are trying to do that now behind the scenes. But what's weird is that every, like, literally every other industry like this, they're, they're everywhere. So, like, I have a... Uh, family friend who runs a YouTube like uh, beauty, I guess health and beauty type channel. Mm -hmm. and she's about twice my size, and like they have, it's it's like a real, it's like a legitimate business, you know. Like mm -hmm. they're like signing contracts and agents and all kinds of stuff, and companies are throwing money left and right. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. nothing like That's that. That's why everyone thinks we're balling, <laughs> man. Yeah, I'm like it's nothing like that at all. What we do, yeah. Right? But folks are watching what they see on TV and they think, wow, these guys are just balling out. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> no. no, we're falling out. <laughs> yeah, but I think uh, it, because it's going to take time for the, um, the, the firearms industry, I think, is just way behind the people who own it, the technology. I mean, you've got guys who are just discovering Facebook. Yep. You know, so it takes time for that to come. And some of, the, some of these guys will never change. They don't think that, that we... Uh, that we have any value. And then it's gonna be interesting to see what happens to the time period that we're going into. And I wanna ask you about this, like, do you think that we've got good times ahead or bad times ahead? Uh, I mean, short term, good time. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna last, because what you're seeing now, for instance, I know a big uh, retailer that was selling uh, Ruger AR556s for, I think it was like, 460 bucks or something like that lately, right? The complete right. And uh, they're losing money on that deal, but they're doing it because they need cash flow, right? And I think that's probably going to end up slowing down around like a year from now. You know, post election, everybody was stocking up and now they need cash flow because a lot of them took out loans to buy that merchandise and that inventory. Right. Now they have cash to pay, pay those loans back, right? So that's happening a lot and that's been happening for the last few months. Um, so for actual firearms themselves, uh, I don't know how long it's going to last um, that way, but I think accessories, I mean, from what I see in questions and, and video views and all that stuff, accessories, interest is going up. I think a lot of people are buying 
you know, their bone stock Colt 6920 uh, last year before the election and uh, just to get one. And now they're like, oh, well, I don't have to be in fear of somebody taking it away or preventing the purchase. And now I need an optic or something like that. So um, I think it sort of depends on the sector of the industry. But short term, I think it's good. I, you know, regardless of what you think of the administration, I don't, I don't think they're coming for guns anytime soon. Yeah, um, the way I think, I think it's a great time uh, right now and ahead for the people who are buying stuff. Because of what you said, there's just so much stuff out there, and um, I have my FFL, so I'm seeing some of you know what's going on in the wholesale market. I guess I just said. I, uh, by the way, I just oh, sent my, I sent it in on uh, Saturday, so we'll see. Right? It might be either a I'm going to get my FFL, or b there's going to be like ATF agents kicking yeah. <laughs> looking for like Ilian Gonzalez. <laughs> Lockdown. <laughs> they, they're going to look at your YouTube videos. <clears throat> For real, my band, the ATF shirt, I wore in half of them. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, Sorry. It's not, it's not really. It was actually easier than we thought it was going to be. And we even went further and got our SOT. I'm getting one to, yeah, that's my next Yeah. Question. Yeah. So that's, uh, I think it's a pretty good thing to do. But what I'm seeing behind the scenes is like guys, are companies are just cutting the price on everything, on ARs, especially because they made so many. Right. So you know by the time you see those coming into the stores they're really cheap there's gonna be lots of competition so if you're buying it's a good time and then everything's available all kinds of ammo is available all kinds of guns are available accessories absolutely i mean if you you know i've been buying guns now for again probably two decades so i have a little bit of perspective not as much as some of you guys but listen like historically speaking good times come and bad times come right so like now if I was on the edge, I would be buying stuff because it's a, it's a buyer's market in terms of like anything that you think could be scary, right? Um, so like for instance, some of you guys watch my channel know I, I bought a Barrett right before the election because so I was like, oh, nice. man, what? That, <laughs> that, that could get banned. <laughs> so, How did you convince your wife of the Barrett? Please, I want to know step by step so I can convince Lola on that one. <laughs> I actually didn't ask her. Oh, oh, there you go. That's a good plan. <laughs> that helps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But, um, but no, but like, so things, I mean, not so much like that, but like, you know, a Colt AR-15 right now, you can get a Colt 6920 for like, I saw one the other day for like 710. That's insanity. It's insanity. There is no way you're ever going to lose money on that. It's never going to go down in value. You know, like that's just historically low prices. So that's just an example. But um, yeah, no, I would absolutely be buying. The one thing I wanted to bring up though, and I'm actually going to do a video on my channel on this relatively soon, is the ammo uh, issue in California. So we are going to see, this is my prediction, right? This is my Nostradamus prediction. I actually did a video on this a year, a year ago, predicting this, and it's I see it happening still, is that um, with the ammo rules changing in California at the end of this year, uh, there's going to be a rush on ammo at the end of the year, huge rush, huge. Like I think, I think everything's going to go up at least 20%. In yeah, I mean, California moves the market on a lot of things, right? One in seven guns in America is owned in California. So, and for those that don't know, or aren't tracking what I'm talking about, California is, we need Adam Crouch here to give you a legal legal brief, but basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> basically they're going to require like ID for any ammo purchase. They're going to have to track it. Um, there's going to be limits on what you can get and when you can get it and all that stuff. So what's yeah. going to happen, just naturally speaking, is that people are going to stock up. Like, yes, you can drive to Arizona. Yes, you can drive to wherever. But the majority of people who own guns aren't watching this channel, aren't gun nuts like we are. They're guys that go to Walmart and buy 100 rounds, right? So the people like that are going to be like, oh, crap, what do I do? You know, they're going to buy a ton of it. So. Yeah, and a lot of people are gonna wait, think there's, thinking there's gonna be pushback because um, there's been some pushback with magazines. There have all, yeah. I mean, that was a historic piece that, that happened what, last week. So yeah, but you know, there's pushback, and then the people push back against the pushback. This is the problem with places like California, and unless you get rid of those politicians, I'm not. You know, I know we promise not to get into politics here. <laughs> California, you can't help it. No, you can't. It's true. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, right now the gun owners out there are largely outnumbered, and that's just how it is. So yeah, um, I mean, my advice—it's kind of like with the stock market: buy low, sell high. Right. Now it's low, for sure. Yeah, it's really low right now. It's probably going to get lower. Like I think um, that heading towards the next shot show, which is in about like what, like six months or something. Yep. You know, the next heading towards the next shot show, there's still going to be people, companies maybe pretending times aren't so bad. Right. 
you know, and they're going to put on a good face at SHOT Show maybe, but then after SHOT Show and then leading the few months leading up to NRA, we're really going to see some, because like the suppressor thing, for example, is going to take out a few companies. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. I mean, 100% it is. There's just no getting around it. You know? Yeah. And, and then there's guys, there's companies that just newly six months, a year ago, got into to, um, building ARs and buying machinery and they just went out there and built every AR and they took out huge loans and all that, that kind of stuff. Those guys are going to be running into that. So we're going to start to see some of the effects. The reason why I think we're not, I mean, we're still at an all time high with uh, Nick's checks, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. This year still, still setting the record. Yeah. And the, it's it's weird what's going on out there because there's like new gun guys coming into the fold. I know there's some people who are like scared because of who became president. They're like, oh, this means, you know, horrible times for us. So now we're going to get guns because those guys were getting guns the last eight years against us, which I don't really believe in. Sure. No, I yeah. agree. All that is absolutely happening. But I, I still think what you said about the manufacturers cooling up and you know before the election is absolutely true so that that inventory is still out there you know yeah. and the gun companies like smith and wesson will run in seven days a week 24 hour a day shifts for a year. yeah i mean yeah. they literally had the hillary plan that's yeah. they were like hillary's gonna win and then we're gonna sell every gun that we make right like I, i'm from springfield massachusetts for those that don't know so like i grew up almost across the street from smith and west i could see the plant from my house wow like so a lot of my friends work there that i grew up with and they literally worked for a year and a half. The, the machines never stopped. Never. Mm -hmm. like, so, so there's yeah. this one out there. Yeah. Oh, by the way, I just want to let you know. Sure. We've got someone from Primary Arms watching this. Oh, God. He says, <laughs> thank you for your support. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, you know who that is. <laughs> I do. It's Dimitri. Yeah, Dimitri. The sexy, the sexy Greek guy, Dimitri, for folks out there. Um, um, so Lola is pointing me. She says, I need to go to what are some of your other hobbies? Um, and are you into Game of Thrones? Is that from Dimitri? Is he asking that? <laughs> no, he's not. He wants to know if you guys would be a show. Oh, he, okay. Dimitri wants to know, will we be coming to SHOT Show? Uh, right now, I don't plan on going to SHOT Show. Yeah. Um, the last one I went to uh, was my first one. And uh, I've been to NRA before. I'm actually going to TriggerCon as well. Um, so we'll try that out. But shot, I was a little bit uh, whelmed. How to, on the how, to say, how, how to say this diplomatically? No, uh, it's very overwhelming, actually. I mean, there's mm -hmm. just like, you know, there's so much. Yeah, stuff. don't say it. Here, here's how you say it diplomatically, Mike. Don't say it <laughs> diplomatically. Say it. So <laughs> I was hear. very turned off by all the egos in the industry. Mm -hmm. Very much on the YouTube side or on the gun, no, the gun no, side, the industry side, mm -hmm. and just you know, everyone coming up and saying, "Hey, I'm." It's like what I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. hey, Hey, I'm Tim, or I was a uh, 03 whatever in the Marine Corps. I'm like, I don't care. Like, not even a little yeah. bit. <laughs> so stuff like that, you know, and everyone just thinks they're so awesome. And uh, NRA, you know, for those that don't know, SHOT is industry people, right? So yeah. that's 95% of who's there. In NRA, which is the only show I had been to previously, is the exact opposite. It's 5% industry, 95% normal people. Yeah, it's the people, the people who support us. Right, and it's totally yeah. different. Everyone's cool at NRA, and it's not like, you know, a, a blank measuring contest, which Shot absolutely was, uh, from what I saw anyway. So right now, I don't plan on it. I don't want to say no definitively, um, but I don't, I don't plan on it. So. Yeah. See, that's the cool thing about you. I mean, you you have served in the military, but you kind of don't throw it in people's faces. And um, I, I like how you, you know, you, you run your channel. You're not the only guy who's in the military and doesn't throw it in everyone's faces. But there. Yeah, it is kind of a thing. And if you weren't in the military, there are people who kind of ice you out. Well, it, it's just such a turnoff because what one or two percent of people serve in the military in the country. <clears throat> but we want, I want every single person in America to be into guns and have guns and protect themselves and support the Second Amendment, right? So the more people that get guns, the better. It, it's, yeah. I don't care what you did. If your hair is purple, if you're a vegan, like whatever. Mm -hmm. You're into guns, cool, let's talk. So I think to just limit it to this alpha male mediator thing, while it's cool and funny, you know, there's people that do that and that's just dick and it's good, I think is a turnoff for a lot of people because the majority of the people out there who are looking for a gun, you know, like literally I have a neighbor who lives right over there, um, mm -hmm. just messaged me two days ago and was like, hey, when are you going to the range? 
next. I, I need to learn. And she's a she's a female, and her husband's in the military, and uh, he's gone a lot with his job. And she's like, I need a gun. I need to learn how to shoot it. Like that's that's who needs to know about guns, right? And if you come off and you're like, I'm this super tactical ninja expert guy, she's not going to want to listen to that because she's going to be so intimidated. She wants to know how to learn. She wants to know how to rack the slide. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's that, that's that's the level we're at there. And I think. Those are the people that, I mean, like for instance, I still do uh, clean and lubricate videos, how to clean and lubricate a gun. They're my, there's seven of my, my 10 most popular videos. And like, mm -hmm. realistically, I mean, I don't need, you know, obviously I don't need to do any of those anymore. I don't need them for traffic and they're boring, but the reality of it is those videos are exactly why I started the channel, right? It's to get Yeah, you're serving people out there. I think people need to, whenever I do those kinds of videos, people always, I always get a lot of thanks. I'm always surprised at it because uh, I do get mocked by some people for that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I but there are folks who, who appreciate that. I do too, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, so it's not it's not for them, you know. Yeah, I mean that's our purpose. That's that, like you just said, that's really why YouTube is here, right? It is. It is. Um, yeah. You know, there's there's people who do it for a variety of reasons, and they're all fine by me. I don't care what anybody does, but yeah, I mean, I think. Getting good information out to people, at least what I think is good information on products, is what it's here for. So, like, you know, people say like, "Oh, all your all your reviews are positive." But well, number one, that's totally not true. I have like four or five that are just completely negative. Like, do not buy this gun ever. Yeah, I've seen you. <laughs> I've seen you come down hard. But yeah, so that's totally not true. But but yeah. also like you know like for instance, I, I filmed the Taurus M85 video last night and uploaded it this morning. It's a revolver. It's a budget revolver. But I did a judge video before that. And, you know, I said, you know, the judge had problems. I had to go back to the factory. I talked about all that. Like, that's about as objective as you could be, right? So, but that's just one piece of information for the, the buyer out there who's trying to decide what they want. So, mm -hmm. you know, try to lay it out there. So. Yeah, I think there's room to do everything in this. I think there is room for people who do all the super tactical ninja stuff. Yeah, no, I do too. Yeah, it's cool. But I think that we do run a risk of scaring a lot of people out there and like you said this is for everyone and there's levels and people can come in and go from one level to another or stay where they are and grow and also, at their own pace and also with the military thing right like really who would you want next to you in a gunfight right do you want rob latham who's never been in the military or do you want the guy who's like the 101st airborne cook like yeah, really yeah. like really like come yeah. on you don't necessarily know who you're getting. And that's not to knock that's not to knock anyone who serves in the military. It's not, like everyone has to do a not, job to make not, it work. Right, exactly. Yeah. Not. But my point yeah. is like the, the the theory that if you're in the military, like you are some sort of expert knowledge base is just absolutely yeah. not. You know what's weird? You know how many friends I have who are in the military that they come to find out how to use guns from me? Yep. Exactly. Tons. <laughs> yeah. Tons. Yeah. It's so weird. I always feel like, okay. Why are they, why do these guys not know this? And they right. tell me, look, they don't let us even hold these guns by ourselves. <laughs> right. And like I did a video uh, a year or two ago about why military M9s, uh, Beretta M9s don't work, but civilian ones do. And it was basically kind of going into that. And the story I told them that was I had a uh, E7 Army uh, soldier, a sergeant first class, come up to me one time and say he had been in 17 years, carried an M9 for two deployments in Afghanistan. Came up to me and said, "How do I, how do I lubricate this with the M9?" And I was like, "I, I just, I give reaction. I just gave you like you're an E7. How, how do you in, infantry? Like, how do you not know how to lubricate this?" And he was like, "Oh, we're just always told to keep them dry." <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. But you see my point, right? It's yeah. Like, that's a, that's a that's a combat focused MOS. Yeah. So the point is that it doesn't automatically infer knowledge. No, absolutely not. And we can all like I when I whenever I do that, I always feel good about it because I'm like, wow, I did something for these guys. And whoever went out there, whatever you did, and you went out there and you served, that's awesome. Agreed. That's why okay. I think about it. So I'm always ha one to two percent of the population does it. So yeah, no. absolutely. So let's hit up some of the questions here. Um, someone wants to know what's the the rifle behind the glass table behind you. What is that? Got it. Hold on. So this is a rifle that's currently under review. It is the uh, Aero Precision 20-inch, uh, I think they call it the AM15 A4. So 20-inch rifle. Uh, we got cool. Burris uh, 1 to 8 X, uh, XTR2, which so far has been an excellent scope. Uh, I've had that on a few different rifles. We're just trying it out. Worn mount and uh, Surefeed Industries, uh, USGI mag. 
which I really like. If you're going to use USGI, those are the ones I tend to prefer. Oh, those are better ones? There's some of the better ones. There are some good ones. Uh, them, D&H, are very good with the 30s. The brown owls, 20s are very good. But anyway, that's a whole, that's a whole other video. But <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, this it's like they're so different, right? There's they so are. many different ones, yeah. yeah. And then we have a, uh, if you guys can see that on the camera, a impact weapons component light mount, which mounts on any sort of standard handguard, which is cool, and uh, enforce light on there. So real kind of basic sort of um, setup, but it's got a lot of capability. Um, yeah. so, That's yeah. very cool. Where's that Super Ninja tactical gun that you have for the 4th of July, man? That's <laughs> it, what I want to know. It's in, the room, it's in the room behind me in a safe. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, everything's taken off of it. It's down to oh. bare, bare bones components now. You know what was amazing to me? Um, how the hell you were lifting that gun. Because it looked like all those magazines were loaded. <laughs> it, weighed, it weighed like as much as a 240. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> so, it was so heavy. <laughs> and, and everything on there, you didn't like mock up anything on there, right? Everything on there was functional? Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, it, it was functional. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you could, I guess, shoot it. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you could use it. For those that didn't know, I did a video, it was a parody video about the most American AR 15 ever. And that was actually a super successful video. And I don't generally do comedy, I've done two things now that were comedy. That's and, what makes it funny. <laughs> yeah, and uh, people were very caught off guard with it. That video right now was my number one video ever on Facebook. It has more dislikes on YouTube than any video ever of wow. mine, which is a good indicator. <laughs> I think yeah, yeah. Of, yeah, that's how you know you're going big when your dislikes outnumber <laughs> your likes. <laughs> exactly. I think a lot of people were caught off guard by it and just didn't yeah. expect me to do that. <laughs> and I think you were mentioned on some blogs. Um, was it, I, like I said, I can't remember either the Truth About Guns or the Firearm blog or one of them you were on there right uh I don't, i've been on there I, yeah no i saw they shared that up they uh um, oh, yeah I, yeah I didn't see it. let me see if i could find it it was one of them i don't know which one it was now yeah but, you know i go through those blogs all the time and i was looking um I guess yeah it's, it's actually the firearm blog okay it says when america meets troll level expert yes american <laughs> ar-15 <laughs> So, uh, just look that up on the firearm blog, and it looks like um, it was written by Frank K. Okay. I don't know Frank. I know a couple other writers over there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, those yeah. are all good guys. We we like it when you share our videos on the blogs. Yes, absolutely. You know why though? In all seriousness, you know why those 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 forums? It's they have good traffic, but the, the reason those forums are so influ are influential, or those blogs rather, is their email list. So I'm obviously on their email list. So I get like literally, I think I get their emails because I'm East Coast, same as you. So I get their email when I wake up. So like I wake up, check my check my phone, right? And there's I go through emails and messages. And uh, so like I, I'm looking at the stories like in my bed before I even get out of bed. Yeah, so. me too. Yeah, because <laughs> if, if there's something going on in the firearm blog or, or the truth about guns that's big, yeah. it's like you gotta get out of bed early. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and go start making trouble. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's uh, you know, and that's how like people think that we are we're all competitive and I don't know, maybe we are we are all competitive as guys, but you know, we kind of work we all work hand in hand, right? We do. There's a couple exceptions to that in the community, but the the community of people who do this um, is just awesome. Like like Hank said, so I before this video ever came up, I, I told Hank like, "Hey, man, I'll be in Florida relatively soon. I might stop by the hacienda." He's like, "Yeah, come on by whenever." You know, yeah. uh, that's just kind of how it is. So um, it's like that with just about everybody. You know, yeah, we, share, like that. we share we share a passion, the same passion. So. You know, it's not, it's, that's the thing with the quote unquote gun community. Um, people think that we're all super together and that's not necessarily the truth, but for the most part, we do try to get along and, you know, some of us do relatively get along. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And like, I mean, me personally, I try to stay out of all the drama that we can. Uh, mm -hmm. of course, viewers know there are like channel feuds. Yeah, <laughs> I, I you, yeah. you haven't been in a channel feud with anyone. Not that I know of. Maybe someone you, was in, someone was in one with me. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, let's start a channel feud to, with each other. <laughs> I know, right? For real. Yeah. Just but, uh, let's make it like Biggie and Tupac. You know. <laughs> we should. East but, coast, uh, west coast. <laughs> but yeah, no, I stay out of all that. You know? Yeah, I prefer. You know, I I know that th these kinds of things come up and. 
You know, I mean, I'm in this because I really do believe in freedom. And part of freedom is you don't try to impose yourself on other people. And for the most part, for the most part, I think that the guys in the industry don't do that. I agree. You know, yeah. there, there are a few guys out there that get into that. But for the most part, we're out there trying to help each other. We all have our different things that we do. Everyone has their way that they come. They come at this stuff. And, you know, you have to respect that. I know it's tough sometimes when like this, you know, this is a human nature thing that sometimes someone else just gets like a big limelight, you know, it's like, oh, that bastard. Been, but that's how it goes. You know, everyone gets their turn. We all start in the same place in life. We all start. We're born. We all start at zero. We're all ended up the same place. Yep. No, absolutely. Yeah. And it's just along the way, you know, there's some differences. Yep. Absolutely. I agree. Uh, there's, and you know, what's really good about, well, America, number one as a whole, and number two is uh, this sort of YouTube industry, if you will, or gun industry. People constantly say to me, like, oh, I wish I could do what you do. You can. Like, I have no special skills. Like I said, I didn't know how to edit a video. Like, I, I didn't know yeah, any just of that. Jump in there. <laughs> just do it. Like, yeah, yeah, just do it. Like, it, it's yeah. absolutely out there for you guys to go take. And what, like, uh, John Patton, for instance, over at the, um, the Gun Collective is doing a really good thing. Um, trying to share like up and coming YouTube channels now in his videos. And obviously he has a huge audience, particularly on mm -hmm. Facebook and Instagram. So that's, that's huge. Like if I was an up and coming channel, I would, I would be emailing John every day. Yeah. Like, I've yeah. asked him five times a day, I'd be like, Put my, <laughs> I need to be in your videos. Like, you know, you got to hustle out there and get it. You know, like that for, for someone like John to do that every week is huge. Yeah, that is pretty good. And he's also doing something I think that's very unique inside of the gun YouTube thing because he's the, the, his whole approach kind of like a news like approach to it, which I don't think anyone else is doing. No. Not that I yeah. know. No. Yeah. He has a comic prompter, so he's got like fancy equipment. Yeah, man. He well, you know, he, <laughs> he didn't start out that way, just like no, we were saying. No, no, he didn't. I know that. Yeah, yeah but, he has to build up. He's like Obama up there with the teleprompter. Yeah, man. He's getting really, he's getting real good at that. You know, he's also getting what what's funny with those guys is they're getting really good at getting people's attention on Facebook. I don't think anyone else does like the, they do all these crazy things like this in their videos. Yeah. You have to click on it. Yeah, man. They're like psychologists. They have they have meetings and this is how we're gonna get these bastards to yeah. stop here and listen. But you know, that's good. I think that um, people who, to me, people who are approaching it like that are, they realize that this is broadcasting and a lot of people are turning to us because they're turning away from traditional media, right? We don't believe in them anymore. Absolutely. That, that, yeah. That's 100% true. Yeah. And, you know, you can't, well, you can, but odds of getting a reply, I mean, you can't just message the person you watch on TV. You can, yeah. but very unlikely that anything is going to come of it. Whereas us, we're very approachable, you know, I mean, even yeah. take Hickok, I know, spends hours every day answering messages. Like, he, and he doesn't get to obviously all of them, but like, you know, he tries to. Everyone try. Well, not everyone. Most people try to get to them. Yeah, most of most of the guys out there are, are good guys. Before I started doing this, I was fans of everyone, you included, that um, that does this. And I found that for the most part, everyone's good. There's always exceptions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but to keep it like on a up, an up and up right now, we won't get into the exceptions. Absolutely. And I think in a lot of cases, it's not even worth it. It's not. And that's yeah. exactly like I said. It's just it's not, yeah. worth, it's not, worth, not it. worth it. No, absolutely not. So let's hit up some more questions. Uh, someone wants to know, what are your top three guns, carry guns, carry guns? Uh, okay, so I got to preface this by saying I just got a Walpo TPS in uh, Thursday, and I've had it up the range twice now, and that one's creeping in there, but it's not there yet. But I was, I've been thoroughly impressed by it. It's the MT version. Um, but again, we got to have more rounds through before I go and throw a review up. But um, so probably, I guess the guns I carry the most is probably the better way to ask it, because like favorite yeah. is really the same. So I carry uh, Smith & Wesson 442 um, pretty often. Um, I carry a um, probably a shield, probably the second most. Okay. Smith & Wesson Shield 9, and then a um, FNS 9 probably is probably the least. Occasionally during the winter months, which isn't long here, it's kind of like you, um, I'll throw the G9, the Glock 19 in there. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Um, yeah. I was like, how come there's no Glock in there? Uh, so for years, uh, Glock 30 and Glock 26 were primary. Uh, the Glock 26 got ousted by the, uh, FNS nine. I, I 
really like that gun. I think it's what I'm gonna. I have a plan to do a video on like top five most underrated guns, and that one is absolutely gonna be on there. Uh, the gun is fantastic, in my opinion. At least mine is. You know, it's a sample size of one, but that's a great gun. I shoot well. Um, and then, you know, you have sort of. Here, I need to do a video on this too. I have so many topics in my head. But yeah, man, I hope you're taking notes because it's like, videos. for like the Smith and Wesson 442 or any type of J frame or even five shot revolver. Like, everyone in the, you know, the gun world, the, the cool guys will say, like, that's, you know, you need more gun than that, which would you like more gun than that? Sure. But here's the thing like, I've gone out with my friends who tell me they conceal carry all the time, and I'd be like, what are you carrying? Nothing. Like, mm -hmm. yes, like, you will never see me ever not carrying like yeah you know, beyond public i'm carrying a gun like it's yep. happening so mm -hmm. if there are days that it's really hot or you're just going to like chipotle or, or whatever right down the road which for me is right down the road so <laughs> like you're just doing that to throw that thing in your pocket or on your hip is huge right it's it, if you need it you will be so glad you have it and didn't think like oh my primary gun's a glock 19 but i'm not carrying it like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's not. Yeah, so, I think that's the way you have to look at it. I mean, if it's not there with you because it was too uncomfortable or you right. you didn't feel like you can look all sexy and have like a little body shirt on or, you know, right. yeah, no, whatever absolutely. you skinny guys do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, in all seriousness, having that gun is huge, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how I look at it. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing that I say to Lola uh, when people ask us this question. Lola carries completely different things from what I do right, because – you know, I mean, I'm sure your wife is the same thing, right? It's like whatever goes along with what she's wearing. And then, right. you know, you want to have something on your body, not in a purse and that, because that's, you know. Well, so, okay, so we'll go there, right? And I have videos on a couple different videos on purses, and here's the thing. So a lot of women simply will not carry on the on their body. They won't do it, right? So mm -hmm. we just have to accept that, because it's true. Because, like, yeah, that's a fact. So if, you know, having a gun in your per on like a scale of, I don't know, a hundred, if, if having a gun on your body is a, you know, like a Smith and Wesson shield, is it, is it a 90? Having a gun in your purse is at least a 10 and 10 is better than a hundred. Absolutely. Uh, it's better than it being at home and you're in a restaurant. Exactly. So like, yeah, it's, it's not good. And I advise against it, but like a lot of us who are like committed diehard to this, you know, our wives aren't, you know, yeah. I'm like, you just have to accept that. So yeah. having anything is better than nothing, but it's it's obviously it's it's suboptimal for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think like a t I don't think it would be a ten. I think it's probably like closer to a fifty. A ten would be in your right. car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, you know, and a zero would be like twenty miles away. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, so yeah, absolutely. And you know, I well, you know what I noticed? Um, I carried a lot of different things. Uh, started off with a Glock nineteen, and then I got a a uh, yeah. Glock twenty six when I wanted to go lightweight and then the Glock 42 first came along and I was carrying that and then the 43 came along and I, I, I graduated to that. And now that's maimed me because it's so convenient. Yep. You know, so I'm always carrying it and my Glock 19 and Glock 26 don't come out as often. And they sometimes like, so I wind up with a Glock 43 on me, but in a bag not far from me, a Glock 19 or 17. I do the same. I do the exact same. There's, there's definitely not that I have two guns on me, which yeah. probably sounds crazy to a lot of people, but it's absolutely true. Yeah, and then sometimes I'm like, man, I used to be I used to be so comfortable with a Glock 19 all the time. What happened? And I tell people on my channel, I carried a Glock 30 for years. I mean, like a decade, religiously. It's it's one of the only. I only think I had like three three pistols at the time because I was poor, and uh, yeah, like I carried it every day, all the time. And like now, I look at it. It's in my safe. I'm like. Nah, man. <laughs> and you know what the thing is? At least now, I think I saw an article about this somewhere that a lot of guys aren't carrying an extra magazine. I would suggest doing that if you know you're in these circumstances like we are. Like I always have an extra magazine in my pocket, and I could just you know get it out. But I was it was weird. I saw this article that people carry but don't carry an extra magazine for what they're carrying. They don't. But like, and, and again, I will kind of go to what I said earlier. Okay, how many people carry, right? When you're out in public, wherever you are, you know, in states like we live in, where, which are really gun-friendly and pro-gun, um, maybe 10%, like, you know, if you're at the mall, maybe, like, on a good day, 10% of people are carrying. Mm -hmm. what, if, what if every single person who was, you know, of sound mind and body, wherever you were, carried a Smith & Wesson J-Frame? How much safer would be? Would we be? You know? 
<laughs> crap ton. Right. So yeah. my point is like, like what criminal is going to do anything in that kind of environment? So yeah. Yeah. yes, I agree with you. Spare mag, good. More ammo, good. Better caliber is good. All that's good. But again, you don't have to have your gun on you. And yeah, I, something. I have so something many, on I you. So many people that don't carry it. Yeah, they, even if it's a Derringer, like I, I recommend, you know, whatever it is that you feel comfortable with, you know. I would, I would say you at least want to have a caliber that could theoretically do something. You know, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, for instance, I, I saw a case where a guy got shot 10 times in the chest with 22 and stood up and took the gun from the person, right? Okay. So would that have happened with 9mm? Probably not, you know? Right. So, I mean, there's always the what if. I mean, you could go out on this road forever. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 22 is very dangerous, but it depends <laughs> on where you're getting hit with it. So. so that's that's the whole thing. If you want to be more effective, and this, you know, in the last few years with uh, the Glock 43 and a whole bunch of other things inside of that category, that single stack, you know, and the technology that's in a nine millimeter, and even I see like 380s coming up, right? Yes. You know, you have the ability to do a little bit, you know, to do better. Right. Absolutely. And it's affordable and all that kind of stuff. Um, okay, let's hit this one. Uh, where do you get your stencil to stencil your AR mags with the AF emblem? Sure. So those are not stencils. I have a video on it. If you guys are obviously on YouTube right now as you're watching this, just go into the uh, YouTube search bar and put in Mr. Guns and Gear A Alpha Space Breon, B-R-E-O-N, Customs. It'll pop right up. So Abreon Customs is a company out of Ohio that does actual, it's actually not stencils. They do thermal infusion. Uh, as, far oh, as, wow. know, as far as I know, they're the only ones doing it. Okay. Uh, and it's it's phenomenal. It stays forever. It's actually, the material they use is actually embedded into the polymer. Um, so they're awesome. They can actually, um, so here I am doing a commercial for them. But they can oh, that's do, cool. they yeah. can do anything. I'm like they, interested. They can do custom stuff too. So like if you're like a gun company or, or you know. So you whatever. send your mags to them. Yes. Oh, well, yes. So you can do that, or they have, you know, boxes, of course, of like this common polymer mags, like P mags, and so like they have that all on hand, um, and they and they'll sell them to you as well if you want to just buy them from them, or you can send them to them. They they do either. Um, like the pre-election, you had to send it to them, but now they have. Okay. They have can more. you can you get them to do like special Mr. Guns and Gear? Yeah. Logos. They've never done. It. I've never asked, but yes, you can. Like, uh, there's a ton of. If you look on Instagram and you see gun companies with magazines with their logo on them, nine out of ten of them. It's are those guys. Okay. Yeah, I'm just doing it. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I think I've gone to events and and walked away with a couple of those magazines. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they gave it to me. Don't worry. I didn't right. go and jack them up for their magazines. They gave them to me. But yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, but uh, the guy who runs it, a really good dude named Adam, and uh, he's super. User friendly, you know, it's, it's good. Okay, cool. Let's hit these questions before we run out of time here. What sure. do you not like about the Walther PPQ M2? <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> I got uh -oh. this, uh, it's like a controversial issue on my channel. So here's the thing, right? It's a good gun. I've said that a million times. I, I if you guys watch my VP9 review, I discuss it in that. Um, previously, the Walther PPQ was relatively high priced. For polymer, of course, with the rebate going on right now, it's not the same. They're more competitively priced with other polymer frame guns. So my problem with the Walther was that, number one, it has a high bore access, which I just generally don't like. But for other guns that are cheap, like, for instance, I did a review of the Walther, um, whatever C whatever the budget version of that one is, the CP, whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah, review of that, and that gun was like $250 at the time. It has the same high bore access. If I give it a break, it's 250 bucks. But like if you're Walther and you're charging 600 bucks for a gun, you're competing with Glock, m &P, HK, like these are the people you're competing with. Right. So against those, it really kind of annoyed me. Some people say bore access doesn't matter, whatever. I'm entitled to my opinion. I believe it does. I don't like it. So there's that. And then at the time when the PPQ first came out, it was one of the first guns that had the really nice uh, striker fired triggers. That's not the case anymore. There's there's ten guns out today that have triggers that are just as good, and again, a lot of them are priced significantly less, two thirds of the price or less of the Walther. So it's, again, the Walther's not a bad gun. If somebody came to me and said, "Hey, I'm going to buy a PPQ. I want to use it for home defense." I'd be like, "Do it. It's a good gun." Yeah, I feel totally confident with it. It's just that I don't like it compared to other options in the market. Yeah, and I think you probably see this a lot. I I know I do. 
people want me to like something. This is all subjective. It might not work for me. I went through this with the HK VP9. Right. Didn't freaking work for me, so I didn't like it. I didn't want to have people like, oh, well, you're holding it wrong and all that. Well, I don't hold anything. You know, I wasn't holding my Glock wrong. So for me, it didn't work. And, but people want you to like this thing, you know, and I understand they attach to you and they like you, so they want you to like it, but it just doesn't work like that. It doesn't. And a lot of people want me to validate their purchases. So I'm um, sure so you see that as well. A lot of people are like, what do you think of this? And I'll be like, it's, it's awesome, man. Go ahead and get one. They'll be like, oh, I got it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. I like, think a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. What, what do you care what I think of it at this point? You already have it. What do you think of it? Well, yeah. because, you know, um, people have stuff and they want to see reviews. They're like, do a review on this thing. I have I one. I know. You know, and I, and I get that. I'm not saying not to say that to me. I, I get it. I get it. Yeah. It's just, it's absolutely, it's something we see constantly, you know, getting yeah. messages all day long. But this is the psychology of things. Like, people think, well, if someone gave you, if someone gives you a gun, you're going to like it. Okay. Well, if you buy a gun, you probably like it also, right? I mean, well, it's. So, so that's what I say too, is and people always say, you, know, you like everything again. We talked about that earlier. I don't, but what, like when I'm looking for a gun that I want to review, I'm going to pick a gun that I think I'm going to like. Mm -hmm. that, that makes sense, right? Like yeah. why would I want to spend time on something I don't like? That's yeah, if you, if you just went into a car dealership and bought a new car, and then I see you, and I'm like, what do you think? You're going to tell me this is fucking awesome, dude. Right. Exactly, because I bought it. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's going to be, now, uh, yes, I think there's things like people might say, well, what, it, you know, if you have enough time, what don't you like about it and all that? But you, we do things. We pers There's so many guns and stuff like that out there. We always start with what we think we're going to like. Absolutely. You know, and then if, if we find out that we really don't like that thing or it doesn't work the way that we expected, then, you know, that's a big deal. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, every now and then you're surprised. So, like, there are things I review because I know, like you just said, all day long we get messages to review things. Um, so I know people want to see certain things. So like a good example, and I know you work with them too, is Henry. Like I had no interest in lever guns. I was like, whatever. Like I, I have no interest in this. Yeah, it's old school. <laughs> 1800s gun, like whatever. And then I shot it and I was like, oh, this is really actually kind of fun. So yeah. now I think I have like four or five. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of cool see and that's just purely the cool factor now obviously you can always find some practical things sure. about it maybe some you know post-apocalyptic or whatever but the it's it's purely the cool factor i mean they're not making handguns that you can conceal they're making lever action rifles for the most part right. you know but they do have some they have some cool guns and they have some things that are practical but yeah i agree with you in the beginning i was like yeah i don't you know I don't see what's so cool about it, but there is. There's a lot that's cool about it. There's the history. And and what's what's good about doing this too is, you know, if it was just me, like making my channel with no concern for what the audience wanted to watch or cared about, my channel would be like BCM AR fifteens, probably Colt AR fifteens, like Arsenal AKs, clocks. And like aim points and ACOGs. Like those are the things I like. Like I personally like all of those. I like everything about them. They always work. They make me happy. They make me feel good inside. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but like no one wants to watch that channel. You know, <laughs> that's like super yeah. boring. You've got you've got to switch it up. And then I think the other thing, the other part of this is I always try, first of all, I try to help out small companies that no one knows about. You know, and then when it comes to certain companies, I try to expose them to people. That's what I'm trying to do a lot. So in particular with Henry. This is a this is one of those companies like we were talking about in the beginning that's a really really good genuine gun company. They care about the Second Amendment. They believe in guns and they put their money where their mouth is. Yeah. You okay. know, if if you look at that, you didn't go to that thousand man shoot, right? I had to work. I wanted yeah. my main jobs. <laughs> yeah, man. Hopefully, when they when when they do something else, you're there because you missed out on a lot of fun. <laughs> I saw all the videos. <laughs> yeah, but imagine a company, any company that you think about right now, and they take over a thousand. I think um, in the warehouse they had something like a thousand sixty, same exact gun. <laughs> you know, a thousand sixty of these twenty-two lever action guns. I mean, just the the logistics behind that. You know that they did. And special serial numbers too, right? 
Yeah, special serial numbers. They gave people the opportunity to own those guns. So if you paid a certain amount of money, like which basically was just for the gun, you and you can't, you brought yourself out there, you were able to actually shoot this gun, make history, and then they sent the gun to you because I've got mine. Nice. You know, and I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, there is no other company that's ever done that. And speaking of Henry, I have to throw this in whenever they come up. So a good friend of mine is a. Uh, Special Operations Team Sergeant, and uh, on active duty, and I was talking to him one day about guns, and he didn't have any guns, and he's a he's a single dad, and uh, and I was like, dude, you need guns, like you know, like he's like, oh, they're for, <laughs> for work, you know. Yeah. So I was like, no, man, like you need a gun, and uh, he, uh, I, I actually talked to Henry about it because you know why I did because I knew Henry would be responsive to it. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to him about it, and they sent out for him, and he has a, a daughter and a son. They, I only asked, I asked for one gun, that was it, to do a video on just presenting it to him as a gift from Henry uh, mm -hmm. for his service. And um, they sent one for him, and they, they said, oh, he has kids? Well, how many kids? And I bet if I told them he had 15 kids, they would have sent 15 guns. Yeah. Yeah. They, I'd like to say I'm surprised by what you're saying that they did that, but honestly, I'm not. I mean, they, they're genuinely good guys, and you know what? They don't do what they do like everyone else. Nope. Nope. So, and that, for and example, they don't go to shot show. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, nope. and they and they don't, but they go to NRA because that's where the people are. Yeah, that's what they care about. Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, so like that video didn't get a lot of views, but I bet they'd do it again. Yeah, because that's just the way Henry is. Yeah, and that's uh, I I think that's a really good thing, man. And when you look at a lot of these companies that are out there, not they're they're not the only companies that are like this. But for me personally, I think if I'm gonna you know spend my time. Um, promoting, pushing, however people want to look at it at any company. The companies that do those kinds of things for people, those are the companies that um, I want to do the most for, personally. Absolutely. So, yeah. I mean, I agree on it. Yeah, so let's hit, um, okay, someone wants to know, how hard is it to turn a um, SAM 7K pistol, I cannot read Lola's handwriting, into an SBR? All right, so SAM 7K is a, yeah. is a unique beast. Uh, right now, or over the last like month, they've been blowing them out of K-Bar for anybody interested. They're fantastic firearms in terms of quality, build quality. They're as good as any production AK in the world. Mm -hmm. um, however, it depends which SAM 7K you have, which is unfortunate. Uh, people who are into AKs kind of know this. Like A batch of AKs will come in one way. The next batch will come in a different way. Some of them require you to do the whole front end, i.e., with a with a hydraulic press, pull the front sight off, have to rethreaded all that stuff. Some of them don't, so it's kind of the luck of the draw on that one. And then on the back end, depending on what you want to do with the stock, if you just want to put like an ace folder that you just bolt in, it's super easy. You drill and tap it. You may need an adapter for the angle, but there are several companies out there that make those. I think Canis Designs does C A N I S. Um, if you want to go ahead and put like a fixed stock in or like a AK one hundred series folder. It, you need to know what you're doing. You need to have a mill. You need to be like real square. Serious right? work. Serious yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So hair and protection act. Are we close? Okay. That's a state of the industry thing. What no. do you think about this? No. I don't think it's going to happen. I think people need to put their crack stamps in now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what? I totally agree with you. I, I, think I, want, it to, I want it to happen. Yeah. I, I me too. Every gun law to be removed because I personally believe all of them are unconstitutional. Everyone. Amen. But I don't think it's going to happen. What what senator is going to push that forward or, or, or congressman? And then, you know, one person gets shot with a suppressor that was bought afterwards through the program. And then it's on every news site every day. Like this bill sponsored by this senator, you know, led to the killing of whatever like that. So we live in a political reality, unfortunately. Again, I want it to happen. I think everyone should still push for it. Um, I think the, I, I, well, I know for a fact, for 100% certainty, that uh, the petition that we did earlier in the year, and I, I was one of the folks that pushed it out. I'm not sure if you did. Yeah. Um, did. Okay. That got a response from the president. So like this stuff's on the radar, and the more we start pushing it, the better, right? Um, the but, problem is, is we can't, we can't get healthcare even. We can't get these guys to agree on healthcare. Well, anyway. <laughs> so I know, I know you, go, you, you want to avoid this, but this is the thing that you have to think if you're trying to look at this in a realistic way, that the further away they get on things like that. Now, I know some people think that they're, you know, they're 
distracting people over here with this hand, and then they're gonna slowly sneak these things in with the other hand. And hey, that would be awesome. I, I do truly, genuinely believe that there's people out there that wanna you know, change these laws and bring, bring these things into effect. I agree, but probably not enough of them. And one thing I would say in terms of a way to look at it is that the Supreme Court, uh, what, two weeks ago, denied the concealed carry case, denied to, to, to hear that. And uh, Justice Thomas wrote a, a decision on that, or a opposition uh, position paper, saying that he feels that the Second Amendment is a right that gets second class treatment versus the other amendments and the other rights. Right. I'm obviously summarizing, he's much more uh, uh, a better at saying that than I am, but he's right. That's 100% true. I, I don't think anyone who does this and watches this industry uh, could disagree with that at all. So until, until, Bills like that are getting all five to nine justices taking it up and stuff too, like what happened. Um, and until, I mean, this, this hearing, or the hearings are the HPA, I don't even think it's not a committee, right? So like I could write a bill tomorrow that would be in committee. That's nothing. It hasn't gone anywhere. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's, I, I hope it happens, but I, I wouldn't hold my breath and I would not hold back on my suppressor. I, I, I literally have like 10 in right now. Yeah. I'm, that's I'm, the thing I'm, that's, go ahead. I was gonna say I just got a Surefire rider in the other day, and I got to go fill out paperwork for it. So I'm putting them in just like everybody else. Yeah, I think that's the thing that people have to bear in mind here. Look, we're gonna get some positive things. You know, there's stuff that the president can, um, you know, change just by you know signing on the dotted line, and there's things that he can't. Um, then there's things that affect all of this. So if we're talking about the Supreme Court, if he picks Supreme Court justices. They're, that are in line with the way that we see the world, then we have better chances going down the road. And you need to set that set up that foundation first before you get to those things. Right now, it's not there, obviously. Right. You know, so, yeah. So we have to keep working. I think one of the things that's happening is that a lot of people are feeling like, okay, well, Trump's president, you know, we can all party and, you know, everything's going to be awesome. And we can't, you know, uh, we have to, first of all, hold anyone, it doesn't matter if you voted for them, hold them accountable to the things that they say they believe and that you that you believe. And it's just gonna take time. And, you know, if you look at things like, uh, regardless of it's Gun Owners of America or NRA or any of those groups, like their, their revenue's going down. And that just shows like the apathy amongst, you know, uh, the public on the whole. Obviously this is, I'm talking macro, not micro here. Um, so, with that, that, I mean, that's just a terrible sign. Like right now, I want the NRA to be introducing legislation every day to repeal every gun law like I talked about possible. I want their lobbyists out there to be knocking on people's doors. Here's a bill. You can amend it. Let's put this forward. Like that should be happening every day. Um, as of right now, I'm not sure if it is. But if it's not, people like us need to be holding their feet to the fire as well. Getting them on it, you know. Again, yeah, all yeah. of the, all of those groups. Not NRA is the biggest. They always get the spotlight, but yeah, all of, them, all of them. Yeah, we have to hold everyone accountable and keep pushing for these things that we want. Not get complacent, and then just be practical about this. And this may be a good time. You're going to get really good deals on all this stuff, you know. And the wait times are going to get a lot faster once so <laughs> that that huge backlog. I think they're still working through that backlog, but. I have like six cans I put in uh, right before it went through, so July, so I'm still waiting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, we've, we've got to, I think we have to keep pushing on this, but try to be realistic and realize that, you know, the likelihood of this happening isn't very high right now. And if you're just going to sit around and do nothing and wait, then when a few years down the road we realize this is not going to happen, then there's going to be a rush again and it's going to be very difficult for you. And and, a lot, and some of these companies aren't going to be here and there's companies that are right now making, you know, really quality things. I guess folks, think, like one of the things I think that people think that if this goes through, then suppressors are going to become super cheap, but they're going to be throwaway suppressors that are super cheap. Right, yes, some will, some won't, yeah. Yeah, it's not necessarily the same quality. It won't be necessarily the same quality as we have out there now. But so. and, and just a, an angle on that too, right? Is like, like I got saying earlier with AR-15s, right? If somebody, let me let me just give an example. If some politician or whatever is out there saying, we're going to take your guns after the next mass shooting, that will inevit inevitably happen. If somebody owns an AR-15, are they more or less likely to oppose that, right? 
Once they have it, I'm like, you're not, that's not happening. Like, they're not going to do it. It's the same with suppressors. So just the more people that have suppressors, the more normal they become. And I mean, there's been legal rulings on that with the AR-15 that it is common usage. So if suppressors get to the point that they become common usage, well, then we have another advantage there. And we have more people that will get behind it. So I think that's one of the things that you, know, you and I need to and, and are pushing for is just a broader acceptance of all of this stuff, the scary guns, the suppressors, the full auto stuff, which you do a much better job than most folks out there um, on that is just normalizing it because the more it's normalized, then it becomes yeah. normal. Yeah. And I'm not trying to scare anyone into buying anything. I'm not telling you spend money you don't have. I'm not you easy. Some, yeah. You see some good deals out there. You put some money aside, do it, just do it. And, and uh, move on, and you won't you won't regret it. Take it like before. I first I got my first suppressor. I was like, man, is this worth it? Yep, me too. It's awesome when you can go out there and throw a can, you know, on your gun. I think um, uh, SBR is the same thing. I have one. I'm gonna probably put in a few more. I have a bunch as well. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good thing to do. Let's hit these up because I don't want to. I don't want to. Mike's been really generous with his time. Okay. So let's see. Is there a kit for the uh, M&P nine millimeter core for the RMR 06? Do you know? No. Uh, no. So Smith and Wesson did it right. Unlike Glock, it just drops right on. Oh. Okay. Cool. First no time. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No kit needed. That's all I said. Oh, cool. No kit needed. All right. So there you go. Another good thing for the uh, M&P. What do you think about the M&P line? The 2.0 is out now. Have you tried that out yet? Yeah, I got a review of it. Uh, it's, it's, I really like M&Ps. In that review, basically kind of like, let me summarize it. I grew up shooting Glocks. They're some of the first guns I ever shot. Are the guns I've shot more than anything. And uh, so to me, a Glock feels normal. I think most people, that's not the case. And I think if I was getting into guns today, I would probably lean towards the M&P. Yeah, one of the things that keeps me with Glock is the magazines, because I have so many. <laughs> right, right, me too. I have, bin, I have bins of Glock magazines, because I remember $100 of Glock 17 mags during the band. So. Yeah, yeah, so that's kind of like a trap, you know, um, so that, yes, that's very good advice. If you're getting into it today, just consider, and if you can go to a range where you can rent something, try to rent a Glock, rent an M&P, you know, rent a SIG or whatever, and try those things out. And if you don't have a, if you're not in Glock, M and P is not too bad to get into. No, they're good. Yeah, first time um, uh, recommendations for a first time budget AR. Um, so there's what I call the big three if we're talking about complete rifles: uh, the Smith and Wesson M and P Sport, Arrow Precision AC15, and uh, the Ruger. So I'm going to do a whole video on this, comparing all three because I have all three. My Ruger video should be up next week. It's already done, um, but I have reviews of the other two. So uh, one of those three, obviously there's other companies, but a lot of new shooters want a complete gun. They don't want to build their own, and they want one from a big company that will stand behind the product, right? So those, there you go. Um, the m and is by far the heaviest. Um, all three have been very reliable. Um, the m and has probably the longest track record of reliability for all of them. If you go, and it, that's kind of a byproduct of it being out the longest. But if you go, you know, on forums, you'll see a lot of reports and a lot of training schools as well saying over 10,000 rounds with no major parts breakages. So for a gun that costs $500, it's hard, hard to complain about. Yeah. How uh, much extra weight are you talking about? So the M&P Sport 2, this is totally offhand if I get it wrong, forgive me. Uh, is 6.9 pounds unloaded. The uh, Ruger is uh, 6.5, 6.53. I just weighed it two days ago. Um, the Arrow, depending on if you get the mid length of a carbine, is like 6.3. But keep in mind, all of that weight is on the end, so it's in the worst place possible. Uh, okay. for weight. So a lot of people will say, whatever, just work out more. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that sounds good in theory. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. So you get out there and run it all day long. Um, yeah. Those three are good, I would, I would go with those, but I had to lean one. Based on specs, because in AR-15, specs matter, I would lean Arrow, then Smith, then Ruger. But again, they're good, they're good. Okay, so what is it you like more about the Arrow? Is it just the lightweight, or? So the weight's better, uh, the Arrow has, so what I don't like about Ruger and Smith & Wesson, which I talk about in both the videos, uh, when it, the Ruger goes up, is that the companies don't publish everything. Right, so like I called Smith and Wesson, I was like, hey, like first off, I just pretended I was a regular, you know, got viewer call or consumer calling, and emailed the same way, and I was like, hey, what are the specs for your receiver extension? Because they don't say anywhere if it's sixty sixty one versus seventy seventy five, which might not make a difference, but it might. If you go to mortar your gun to clear malfunction, then that thing breaks. It makes a difference, right? Right. So 
they won't say. So then I, I did the same thing, like, hey, I'm Mr. Guns and Gear. I have this, and like, I know people at Smith and Wesson, as I'm sure you do too. And uh, yeah. nope, still wouldn't give me the answer. So, <laughs> are you squat? <laughs> like, is your barrel HP tested? Wouldn't tell me. Like, so Arrow does everything. They tell all their specs, and essentially, you know, you get into the mill spec debate. But essentially, do you think that maybe they just don't even know over there at Smith and Wesson, or is it they don't want to tell? No, I think. Well, the people I'm talking to may not know that may be true, but I think they also know that 95% of their customers don't know and don't care. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, and that, that is true. But you know, I'm trying to again spread the, the, the information out there to the audiences. So, um, Arrow lists every one of their specs. It's basically mill spec in every way, with the exception of a melanated barrel versus a chrome line video, which is a whole other debate um, mm -hmm. that we get into. Um, but you know, they're a very reputable company that's been around a long time making guns, making parts for everybody. Uh, the thing I don't like about the Ruger is again, some of the specs are different. The staking on the gas, um, gas key of the bolt carrier is odd. I haven't seen any problems with it, but it's it's interesting. And it's definitely something that they did to cut costs. Additionally, the Ruger and the Smith have non uh, non shielded heat handguards. Again, probably not an issue for most folks, but the Arrow has shielded handguards. Um, so yeah. There's, yeah, it's not like an arrow commercial. I have an arrow right here, right actually next to me. But yeah, I mean, listen, they're they're a good company. Lots of old gun guys that I know rely on arrow, not just the young ones. So, and if you again, if you go through, I I have series a video series for people who have never seen them on the specs of an AR-15 barrels and what what they are and why they matter. Specs on a bulk carrier group, what they are and why they matter. Same with all the different major components. And um, if you go just by that, again, all of these rifles have performed well. So. So we can't really segregate them by that. But if you go by that, they're all wins. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of these companies need to change their ways because they're going to find going into the future that you know we're all we're all going to want this information, like you're saying. Right. And you then know? You know, for me, as a consumer looking at it, I'm thinking, why won't they publish it? If Maybe it's it must be bad. Like that's the automatic assumption. That yeah, all and even and it may not be. It may not it be may that, not but be. it makes you think that. Right, exactly. <laughs> so. Absolutely. <laughs> That's the scary thing. Okay, Lola, let me see what, what questions you got here. Okay, uh, a viewer, Jackson's old man, says his daughter just crawled for the first time during this video. <laughs> awesome. Congrats, man. <laughs> That's sweet. Okay, cool. Um, and let's see, uh, what is you, your guy's uh, truck gun and what caliber is it? Truck gun? You got one? I do. It's, uh, again, going back, it's a Smith & Wesson Model 10. Uh, an old revolver that beat the heck. It's a police trade in that's disgusting. I have a truck that stays in my truck. <laughs> yeah, I think I paid $149 for it. If it gets stolen, I don't care. Um, and I have that and a set of uh, Peltor, what are they called? Not electronic, but like the old shotgunner earplug, earmuffs. Mm -hmm. It's like my theory is it's more likely to, especially because I drive out in the country to do all the videos and stuff. Like I've seen animals on the side of the road, you know, that need to be put down. So like that's actually why I started carrying a gun in the truck is like, what if, you know, I don't have it like even if you carry a gun, like do you you could discharge it, sure, but like, you know, like it's something that's good to have around that you never know what you're gonna use. And mm -hmm. you're probably the same reason. Like I'm not a big fan of uh of shooting without ear protection if I can avoid it. So um yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know what? I've had like I don't I don't think I've ever had a truck, right? <laughs> like a pickup truck or anything like that. I need to. I keep telling Lola I need a pickup truck. Yep, just, you do. I agree. Just for the credit of having a pickup truck, <laughs> and I've had a few. You know, I've gone through your traditional, well, maybe not traditional, like the Caltech stuff, the sub two thousand, and all that kind of thing. Honestly, to me, what's a good truck gun is pretty much either a pistol or an SBR AR. Suppressed. Right. You, yeah, but <laughs> you, know. I probably, you know, like I just I wouldn't want to get it stolen. That's kind of what I always think about, you know. Yeah, that's the that's the thing about it. So there's, you know, and you can't necessarily take that everywhere, right? So like if you're if you're going across state right. lines and all that, there's um, there's some different laws you have to follow. Make sure you you know about all those things. But yeah. typically, if I'm here in Florida, it would be something like that. If I'm not here, actually, one of the things that I have is a little shorty shotgun. Yeah, I do too. I have a couple. Yeah, of uh, which is probably really loud. And yes, I'm in the position. That, what you said is true. That you know, you could be out there and use something like that, <laughs> and not have air protection and be in a lot of trouble. I'm actually looking for something that I'm just going to wear all the time. 
like a like an old man who's deaf. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that at any time I could have air protection. So there's two products like that. I actually don't know if you know about it, but in all seriousness, there's a uh, Peltor makes something called the TEP 100s, and they basically look like hearing protection uh, or hearing uh, aid. Yeah. And Electronic Ear Pro. Uh, Walker just released one called, and I have no idea what that is. I think they call them the Silencer Ear Pro. And that's basically what they are. They basically look like hearing aids. Yeah, have you done Have you done a video for these? No, I have both oh, in okay. review right now. Yeah, I would like to see that because I think that's probably something you need to do because you don't know when you're going to get into this stuff. And I always tell people, like, there's guys who put those um, obnoxious muzzle brakes on their <laughs> ARs. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun for competition. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They have a point. They have a purpose. But Yeah, but something's going to go down, and you don't have air protection, and that's going to scare the crap out of you. Or if someone happens to be next to you, and yeah. Yeah. And I mean, also, think about any kind of critical situation like that. You want to be able to have your senses and be able to communicate. So mm -hmm. I have videos on this. I'm sure you do too. But like, I'm a huge advocate of uh, if you don't have a suppressor, on your home defense gun to get a good set of electronic hair protection. Yeah. Uh, for, for just that reason. Yeah. You may not have time to get to them, but you might. So it's, it's good to have a set sitting there. Yeah. That's the whole thing. I mean, we could get back into the suppressor thing. That's why it would be awesome if a lot of this stuff would change. It hasn't. You do want to be careful. These aren't things that, you know, you want to get stolen and all that kind of stuff. So you have to. You know, you, you have to think about that. Okay, let me hit, um, let me, okay, so here's, uh, let's make this the last one, right, Lola? Okay, so do you guys have other hobbies? You have other uh, hobbies? Yeah, no, I do. Um, for viewers of my channel, you guys know I live on a lake, which is nice, so I've been blessed to be in that point in my life. Um, yeah, so you're always making me jealous with those with on the dock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this bastard. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, it's America. Work hard. <laughs> no, no, I love it, man. Every time I see it, though. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I fish pretty much every night. Um, nice. Funny, I have a few poles. I have. I almost do it to troll my audience. I have uh, like this real cheap Walmart one that was for it's for my nephew, and he comes over because he's tiny. And uh, like, I'll, I'll take it out there. You know what? The fish don't know what pole you're using. So I'll take it out there and post pictures on Instagram. And people are like, you need a better pole. And I'm like, I have better poles, man. <laughs> but anyway, so, um, so yeah, so there's that. And then uh, I, I like to work out. I'm into fitness. Uh, so weight, no. weight, <laughs> weight training, uh, stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah. And you, and you like dogs. Let's not forget. I, I do. I love dogs. I yeah. don't know if we, is that in the category of hobbies? No. That's... I don't know. I got four of them. In, I got four of them in the room with me right now. Uh, like, are all your, all your dogs aren't boxers, right? No. So I own two dogs. My wife and I own two dogs and okay. uh, they're both boxers. And then we, we dog sit a bunch of our friends' dogs. Oh, uh, okay. Cause uh, one of the businesses we do requires a lot of travel. So, um, <laughs> So with that, like literally, I don't know if you just heard a ding on, on my computer. I'm not sure if that comes through, but mm -hmm. over to my right, the girl who owns those dogs just messaged me and said, hey, my flight's delayed. I'll be in late to pick up the dog. So um, so we dogs hit two other dogs that are boxers as well. So it looks like we have a gigantic boxer pack all the time. But Yeah, that's cool. Good. That's cool. Um, hobbies. Okay, so me, I'm I'm an artist. I don't know if I would look at it as an uh, as a hobby. It's really who I am. So I'm an artist uh, and and a storyteller. So for me, creativity is how I thrive. Now, obviously, this is a little this is a little bit of what we're doing here. Um, but I make the music that's on my channel. I can't read music or anything like that or play music, hmm. but I program electronic music, and that's something that kind of like unwinds me, makes me feel better. Same thing with uh, I draw and I create digital art and all those kinds of things. So anything that I can do that's creative, I, I write uh, stories. Believe it or not, I write songs. I like hip-hop music, believe it or not. I've actually made some in the past, so when that's kind of... Huh? When are you gonna release it? Um, believe it or not, if people look, if they really dig on my YouTube channel, there's actually a hip hop track on my channel. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Just, everyone everyone is looking for it right now. Yeah. So I do all kinds of crazy things like that. I have a three D I have a three D version of me on my channel talking. Hmm. You know, like in three D animation. So I'm just into all those kinds of crazy things. And I like it because it's the way that I unwind other than shooting. 
Right. You know, so it's a it's a good break. All right, so that's it. I want to like call it a break here, man. Any um anything you want to plug? Any videos coming up on the channel? Companies? Anyone you want to plug before we go? Man, there's so many videos coming. Up. I have probably in the kit that are complete right now. Probably. 15 or 16 videos. Uh, and again, like we talked about, you just can't release them all at once. Um, but no, nothing really too big. I want to plug one thing for people who, one thing I did this past year, which didn't get anywhere near the amount of uh, reach that I thought it was going to, but I think it's very interesting for everybody to look at, is um, I did an AR-15 meltdown test, trying to take what Eric and Chad are doing, which is fun and has some information in it, mm -hmm and do a little bit more of a scientific test. So I laid down baseline accuracy for a chromine barrel and a melanated barrel. Everything else is exactly the same. Fire them on full auto until they're after the baseline accuracy, of course. Fire them on full auto until they break. Uh, after they break, four scope shots, all that stuff. Again, from a science and erosion uh, perspective. Then, Very nerdy point of view. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, then, and then fire the groups again out of them afterwards to see how the accuracy changed, all that stuff. So I, me personally, I think that is a gold mine of data for every gun show or gun shop debate out there in America about, about melanated barrels. <laughs> oh, very cool. What's that video called? It's, it's just air. It's, it's a playlist in my channel. It's called the AR-15 Meltdown Playlist. And there's, I think it's a five-part series. Oh, and cool. uh, we get the guys from Faxon on who manufacture the barrels and actually talk about the scientific uh, material properties of each of them and why you saw what you saw, why you didn't see what you didn't see, stuff like that. So uh, I think it's very interesting. Uh, I nerd out on that kind of stuff. So, very cool. I would I would invite everyone out there to go put, play that playlist and just let it play. Yeah, yeah. Yep, they're all yeah, there. Yeah, everyone who's watching this, uh, even after we do it live, everyone who's in the chat and all that kind of stuff, go find that playlist. Uh, AR meltdown on Mr. Guns and Gear and hit it up. Right. Absolutely. I only have like eight playlists, so it's pretty easy to see. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, we'll find it. I'll even I'll try to put a link in the description of this video for it. Cool. All right, man. I want to I want to thank you for coming on, man. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, and uh, if you're in Florida, you know you you know you got to come down to the hacienda and shoot uh, with me. Hang out with the goats, right? Yeah, absolutely. We'll see if we can catch those bad boys. <laughs> oh, I've tried before in the past. I know all about goods. Yeah, absolutely. So um, in the in the line of you reminding people about that video, we just uh, posted a Sten video, everything you want to know about Sten guns. I watched it. It's very oh, you did? What did you think? Um, I, I Again, it was very informative with the different generations, why the gun evolved from the history of it, the cost of the Thompson and stuff like that. Some of that I did know already. But one thing I didn't know was just the amount of stems that were made uh, like you said, Pakistan and all those other countries. So I thought it was very yeah. interesting. Yeah, um, I, I I learned a lot from. I that's why I do this stuff because I learn from doing it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, then I, and I wind up sharing it with people. And I think it is interesting how many stands are out there. And I think everyone, every home in America, should have a stand gun. I agree. Or a grease, <laughs> or a grease gun. Yeah, exactly. So we just have to make that happen. So we have that out there. Also, I want to remind people that we're on iTunes. So you can either search Hank Strange or Who Moved My Freedom Podcast. We're on iTunes. Go listen to it. Um, listen to this one when it comes out. Guns and Gear. Make Guns and Gear the biggest one ever. <laughs> and leave a positive review for us because we're very new. So that helps us out. Uh, you know, we can be like, what's hot on iTunes? I want to I wanna thank everyone. I want to thank all the sponsors of my channel. That would be... Um, Andrew's Custom Leather, Rand CLP, and uh, Safety Harbor Firearms, Lola Lola, reminding me of everything here. And of course, I want to thank Big Daddy Guns who gave who gave us the studio, the bandwidth, you know. We're in their warehouse right now making trouble. I want to thank those guys. And uh, thanks everyone for joining us, guys. Don't forget, don't forget to check out that playlist on Mr. Guns and Gear's channel. We want to see that hit like a million views. Hey man. I don't, um it's not, I'm assuming it's not a million yet. I know you got several million plus views. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah. Not, not those ones. Yeah, so make it make it hit that. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Oh, you know what? Before I forget, I want to thank everyone that supports us on Patreon, okay? We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. Did you go the Patreon route? I did. I did. Uh, and the only reason I did was um, oh, so many viewers were asking me to do it. So mm -hmm. I got to the point where I didn't plan on doing it, um, but then I kind of felt like being a, like I was almost being an ass by not doing it. If that makes sense? 
Because a lot of people really do want to support us. Yeah, exactly. They want to support you and they know, I mean, you took a hit, right? In terms of whatever revenue, we don't make a lot of revenue from YouTube videos. Like, like 80% because yeah. it's, it's still down. Um, yeah, yeah. Same thing here. Yeah, but so I did and I, I don't promote it. So this is actually probably the most promotion it's ever gotten. I don't promote it, but obviously I appreciate everybody who does it for sure. Yeah, so is it, it's Patreon slash Mr. Guns and Gear? Yep, you got it. What's Lola? Okay. Someone, Lola is, is sending, telling me something about a 6.5 Grendel RDB. He wants to know what you guys think about it. Yeah, what do we think? Is there a 6.5 Grendel RDB out there? I have no idea. You know, uh, yeah. if Chad, Chad Enos, if you're watching, mm -hmm. Here you go. Wanna I doubt. I doubt he's watching. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, everyone's gonna send it to him now. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> his email is on the Mister on the Mutton Fancy channel. Look it up. So, okay. <laughs> Dad has told me. I, I can't count how many times that he's gonna get a gun in for TNA all the time. I've asked him for a KSG forever because I think it's an interesting concept. I've never. I've never even handled one. Chad. Okay. When Black. you okay, so here I'll Black. make you. <laughs> yeah, listen. Here's the thing. Uh, Chad's not very happy with me because I did a video about a year ago about the RDB, and uh, they feel like I did like I didn't like the RDB or something. I think the RDB is a cool gun, from what I see of it, and um, you know, it seems to me like there's more of them coming out. So if they make different calibers, that would be great. You know, six and a half, uh, six point five Grendel is is a pretty cool round. Uh, I think there's a few other ones out there, like six point five Creedmoor. We can get, we can go down that rabbit hole of all the the cool rounds. People want to see like AK, you know, seven six two and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's a decent gun, from what I've seen. And it, guns and gear, if you can't get your hands on them. When you come see me, that's all we'll do. <laughs> awesome. Oh yeah, get the Andrew Keltec playlist. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, they're not happy with me, but they can't stop me. I still own Keltec guns. <laughs> I don't know any. Yeah, that's the thing. I, yeah, like you said, I'm interested. I'll try them out. I'll give them a fair shake. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll do that. So when Guns and Gear comes, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll let him see see what he thinks about it. I mean, that's all I try to do is give everyone a fair shake out there. That's the way I feel about it. I think that the uh, the um, the RDB is one of the decent guns out there, especially in the bullpup thing. It's got some cool stuff going in it. Cool. All right, that's a. That's a quick little thing at the end. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm out. Peace. Yeah.